to share on, on a foundation, on the subject of the foundation, because I think it, it, I was thinking, how oh, that is going to fit in. But it doesn't have to fit in, of course, but actually the Lord just put in my heart that scripture that actually we are rooted and grounded in love. So we're going we're gonna to have a little look at the foundation. I think I was a bit spurred, spurred on by what Matt shared last week about um, how this place runs, this place, how we operate in the church. And um, I think as part of that, I, 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 kind of, I guess I'm kind of spurred on to just say, let's look at our foundation. Let's make sure that we're on the right foundation. Because there's no other foundation that we can, ha- that we can have, we're going to find out, than Christ. And we are rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. And my passage for, that, for, for the foundation is, is 1 Corinthians 3, uh, verses 1 to 15. Um, I guess where I'm coming from a, bit, a little bit is that God's been showing me some things that are, that are, so I'm speaking a little bit out of my own experience I think it's always good to, that we speak out of our own experience as well as the truth because it, I can't speak out of theory but actually the, the, where the foundation of our lives so simple we don't want to go necessarily digging everything up. God needs to show us what he, what he wants to show us. But there's no other foundation than Christ. So let's read that passage. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 15. Here it is. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. So note, there's a, there's a planting in this section God giving the growth. (coughs) He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labour. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. So then we're moving away from the field to the building site. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest For the day, that's the day of judgment, will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So it's a little bit, little bit sobering, some of, some of that passage, um, to do with 
actually what the outcome is of what we're building. Um, and uh, I think this applies. Well, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Are we just talking about people like Paul and Apollos who were apostles and ministers uh, who, were, who were teaching in the church? They're, they're the only ones that are building a work? No, I don't think we are. I think we're all, we're all building. Everybody in their whole life, what, what do we spend doing? We just, we're, we're, we're building. There's a, we're working. God has created us to work, whether we're, whether we're working or not, whether we're just retired. I think Andy just retired this week. Yay. So he's got lots of time on his hands. But we're, he's going to carry on working because we all, we're all working. God has created us to work. We do works. Um, we're not justified by our works, but we do works. Everything we do, every action, thought, word, inclination, affection, and motivation. That's all, it all, it's all an outworking. It's all something which is coming out of our life. And, and what Paul is saying here is actually what, we need the foundation for that to be Christ. Our foundation is Christ. And what we, what we want to build from that foundation. We want our, our life, to use the other analogy of, of the field, we want our life, the fruit to be, from the vine. John chapter 15, we can read that the, we're, we're, we're joined to the vine, which is Jesus Christ. I am the true vine. And that's the place, of, place where we want all of our all of the goodness which grows and, and comes naturally through us. That's where we want to be. That's, that's what we believe. So we, can, we can say it, we can sing songs like you know, Cornerstone, I, yes, I'm founded on, on the rock, and all that stuff, which is fine. It's good, and I don't, I'm not knocking that. But I've, I actually found in my own life that quite, there can be whole areas of my life that I'm not really actually building on that foundation. There's something else I'm building on. I'm, I've got other ideas. And I'll come on to what some of those are a bit later. And I think God and his love, God wants us to be joined to his love. And if we, if we look at the fruits of the Spirit, and we will come on to that passage a little bit later on, the fruits of the Spirit uh, starts with love, doesn't it? So you've got love going in from the, from the root. In it goes, and out comes the, f- the main fruit of the Spirit is, is to be love. And if the, if, the, if the fruit of my life is not love, maybe I've got some other stuff that's going on. Maybe I'm building on another foundation. Maybe I'm getting my life from somewhere else or part of it. And it gets, becomes a mix. And God is so faithful. He wants to deal with us, but he wants us to, to have that foundation. And I know that many of us have got a foundation. Christ, this church is, is founded not on something which happened a long time ago. It's founded on Christ, who is our life now. Christ, now. That's the foundation for each one of us. We're a living we're living stones. You're a living stone. I'm a living stone. It's a, we're, we're a spiritual house. That's what the church is. We're a spiritual house being built by God. It's being built by the Holy Spirit of God. So whatever's, whatever's happening in my life, which is going to be, or your life, which is going to produce this good fruit, which is going to be on a solid foundation, is going to come as we build on Christ, just Christ. And it's not, it's not what I want. It's not about what I want. It's not about me and my plans and the desires and agenda. That all has to go. All of it has to go. The only foundation 
is Christ. And this is, what, this is what God was impressing upon me this week. Just reminded me of it. Actually, you can, you can build, we call it, castles in the air. Just on, the, just on my, own, my own fantasies, my own desires. Things that, things that I've wanted. And, and we'll, we'll look at some of those. But none of that's going to last. None of it. This is a, this is a, it's a joyful message because it's so simple and God wants us, God wants us to be in connection with him. He, he, he's drawing us. He's, he's saying to you, look, trust in my love. Come, believe that I love you. And in doing that, he's going to lay a foundation in your life if you don't have one. And I'll, I'll, I will briefly touch on, on that. Um, what if you don't have... Uh, a foundation yet because I could be I'm talking I'm, maybe I'm just talking to a, a bunch of people everybody knows that, that Christ the foundation and everybody knows but do, do we all know are we all founded on Christ so I'm just going to say very, very briefly I'm just restating some of the things that we have heard during the meeting and over recent weeks that actually God wants God is in the business of putting you in a solid place. And that is on the rock. Okay, that's the best place to build, isn't it? If we dig, if we know, if we know even the most basic thing about building in any country, in any place in the world, we dig down till we hit the rock. And that's where we start building. And if you dig down in your natural life, you won't find rock. You won't. Because ultimately, it just... Things change. Things move. And the things, things that we base our lives upon are wobbly. Expectations that you could have had for your whole life of the way things are going to pan out, the way that your life is going to be, just can change in a moment. And so we need a solid foundation. And God wants us to have that foundation in his love, rooted and grounded in his love, on the rock. And that rock is Christ. And if you don't have that foundation, if you haven't had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, and you don't have a relationship with him by faith, you can receive him today. Today is an opportunity. That's what we're here to do. We can open our hearts, you can pray, you can ask, and God will come. And he'll put a foundation in you. He'll put a foundation in you. That's what, that's what happened to me. I didn't know you could have it. But it did a work in me to make me someone who is solid. And I'm not naturally solid. Some people are. Some people are just kind of really hardly need this. But they do need it. We all need it. But some people are up and down. Some people are, can be rootless. It doesn't matter who you are. God will put a foundation in you of himself, of Jesus Christ. That's what, he's, that's what he wants to do. It's a work by the Spirit, and it's available because Jesus came and died for you and for me. And he was buried, and then he was raised again. And he's the only man, he's the only man that can save us and who wants, he wants us to, he's, he doesn't just set us on a rock he puts us on himself he is the rock that rock is Christ that foundation is him personally it's not teaching it's not remembering everything that I've said or that Matt said or whoever has said, spoken it's not remembering all that stuff or even Bible verses it's him the person of Jesus Christ he is the rock. And he's, it's a wonderful thing when he does that for you, and he will do it for you if you will just come to him and say, I, 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 need, I need you to, to, to build a foundation in me. What other words can you use? Just, just being a, just a real response to what he's saying. Because actually, if you find that your life is shaken, which it is from time to time, actually, that's God's mercy. It's God's kindness to you. If that's what's happening to you at the moment, it's happened, 
that your life has been turned upside down and shaken, it, it's not horrible. It's God saying, I want to put you on a solid place. I want to do a solid work, a deep work in you, and it's my love. That's a safe place. That's a safe place. So that's for people who don't have uh, a foundation. And if you do have a foundation, well, amen. <laughs> Many of us have been had a foundation for years, some, some decades and decades and decades. But as I said earlier, we're, we're building. Today you're building. This week we're going to be building. Every, we're making choices. We've got things that we, things that we do, ideas that we have. And what are we building? Because we, we, our life is building and growing. Those two things, the field and the building site. Sorry, Josephine. Um, so Paul uses these two pictures, a crop and building on a foundation. And, and as I said, everything we do is an act of building or growing or cultivating. Um, and it really does go down. It's not the generality. We're not dealing with just generalities here. That actually, oh, and basically my life is, is rooted on Christ. We're doing God, we, I'm, I'm actually just suggesting that God wants to be specific with you and with me about what am I, what am I building on? And, and I, I don't know what that is. I don't know which area of your life God might put his finger on, but I know which area of my life God was putting his finger on. And actually, we need him to do this. We need him in his love to help us to understand what we're doing. Are we, am I building in the right place? Am I, is what I'm doing going to last? Because I want it to last. I don't want to stand here and the things that I say not to not last. And I don't want, well, I don't want to, as I look around, the people that, that, that I'm in contact with in the church and in house group, in, in our lives, we, we want the works to last, don't we? We want it to last. Don't just want, I don't just want to get by with, with everything being burned up and I just about get in, like Paul describes. But, so we don't, we don't have to, because God in his, in his love wants to, wants to lead us and show us how do, which, what, are we, what, are, what am I building? Are you, are you building on, on me? Is that coming out of a desire for me? Is that coming out of your connection with me? Or does that, does that attitude, does that thought, do those, is, does this assumption about what you're going to do in life come from something else, come from something which is not Christ? So... God is concerned with detail. We can, one, one place to start, thinking about, well, what are these other works, that, what are these works that we don't want, is looking at the works of the flesh. So let's have a little, little look at Galatians chapter 5. It's no, no harm, I'm sure many of us know this passage very well, but Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21, it just reminds us of some of the works that we don't want to be doing. There's some of the building work in our lives that we don't want to be at the base of what we do. So here we go. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, Bits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, forges, and things like these. And it's just stuck in the middle of those things are just bits and bobs that are that you can hide. Jealousy. Fits of anger, maybe that's something which happens in the private. But Paul says, I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
And then he goes on to say, and this is the good news part, the fruit of the Spirit is, and we touched on this earlier, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ, have, Christ Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And that's part, part and parcel of being on this foundation, of just building on Christ, is that every other, every other motive for building has to go. That's what that verse means. Verse 24, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I've got desires. We're all born with them. We've, we've, got, we've, all, got, we've all got them. We've all got things that we want to do. We've all, got people, we've all got things we want to be. Sometimes we tell people those things. Sometimes they're just secrets. Sometimes we don't even think about them. But Jesus is saying, Jesus says, I want you to build just on me. Just on me. Narrow, narrow yourself down to just building on me. I'll show you how to do it. I'll lead you. I'll show you what's, what's not of me. But there is, there is a building, and it's a solid building. It's not nothing that we can do. It's not a, list of, it's not a short list of things that we, that we can do and a massive list of things that we can't do anymore. But actually, it's, it's a whole life of saying, well, I, I want to build your way. I want to go your way. That's the foundation. And actually, this message, therefore, isn't just relevant to people who have just started. It's relevant to us all, because we are all going to be building. We're all doing this day by day. And we can start, as the, as the Galatians found, in the spirit, but end up in the flesh. That's what, Paul, that's what Paul writes to the Galatians. That's his, that was his problem with them. They'd started so well. <laughs> they, they were doing the work in the Spirit, but then they'd ended up trying to be perfected by the law. And that was their, that's where they, that's their, that was their building outside of Christ. They were building on another foundation of their own righteousness. And Paul just pulls them up. That's what this whole letter's about. But he's, for us... Whatever, our, whatever we're building, whatever I'm building, which is not Christ, actually, we've got, we've got the opportunity to, for God to, to put ourselves before God and say, Lord, you're Lord, and what am I building? How am I building? I want to build, I, I want to build, I want to do works, I want to grow just from you. And um, the good thing about Christ is, and, is that he's the master builder. And he's also the master demolisher. Okay? He is the master demolisher. And I'm, I'm going to come on and we're going to have a brief look in a passage in 2 Corinthians in a minute. But before we do that, we've just talked about the works of the flesh, haven't we? We looked at that, that list. Some of them are rather obvious sins, some very obvious things that, oh gosh, that's a no-no. But <coughs> there are other things which are so much more subtle. Other springs, other foundations that which we build upon. And I think one of them so often can be pride. It's something we hardly notice. But pride... James chapter 4, verse 6, just deals with, with pride. If you, don't, if you can't see any pride in yourself, don't pat yourself on the back. It's, it just, it's there at the door, pride. It's just, it's just the smallest amount of me claiming any glory. That's it. The smallest amount of me wanting to, to be or do this thing for my, for my own, or to look like this, or whatever it is, for my own glory. And that's pride. And what does it say? God, oppose, God opposes the proud. So if actually you're finding 
I think you've got opposition in your life. Could be, could be pride. Could be some pride. I'm not saying that's the only cause of opposition, but when we've got God standing in the way, and God will, God is, God is nice. I'm not going against what what, what uh, Mike said at the beginning. God is love, but God is stern actually. When it comes to pride, he, he stands four square in the way. And it's his love. He doesn't want us, he doesn't want us to end up with stuff which is going to be burned up. That's his, it's, it's not his glory, and it's, it's, it's not what he wants in his love for us. That actually we should have just built our whole life on, on stuff which is going to be burned. And pride is of that category, pride. And I don't know how you identify pride, but I know one who can. And that's the Lord Jesus. And the, the Holy Spirit will deal with you. He and he's deal, deals with me on this subject of pride, on this matter of pride. And it gets in the way because we're stealing God's glory. And if what you're doing, if what I'm doing is stealing, somehow taking away from or trying to add my glory to God's glory, God's not going to have any of it. He won't allow it. In the long term, you can, you can go quite a long distance with some of this stuff. And it, just, it just gets harder and harder and harder. And actually, God, in his mercy, can, can just deal with this stuff and get us off building on this wrong foundation of pride. Um... One other thing, some, some things which underpin us are habits. So things that we learned when we were very young, instinctive reactions, things that you've never thought about. Ways that, ways that just you always respond that way, incomprehensibly. Or things that you've never, never really thought about. And actually, you just, we just accept. We come to Christ and we say, yes, 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 you're the Lord. <laughs> Actually, there can be inconsistencies in our lives. And I, I've had those, and I probably still, I, I'm sure I've still got some. There's things I come up against, I just can't, I can't not respond that way. And actually, God doesn't want us to remain under those things and just go, well, that's just who I am. It's not just who you are to respond instinctively, wrongly to something. Because our standard is not to be, well, God just, you know, just, it's my past experience. Our standard is to be Christ and his love. And uh, God's very gracious. And actually dealing with these things, whilst it may be a bit painful, actually, God is love. It's not, it's not going to hurt. It's not going you know, to, to actually... Some, some people hide away from these things and don't ever, there's areas that just, I can't deal with that, I'm not going to talk about it, I'm not touching it. And actually God is saying to you and to us all, let me, let me, let me in, let me deal with that, those things that are hard to remove, to get the foundation right. So let's just flip over into 2 Corinthians 10. Um, very, very, it's a very well known, I think some of us, passage. 2 Corinthians 10. And this is it, verse 3 to 5. Um, unfortunately, it's in the middle of a passage, but I'll, I'll pick it up. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty thing, every lofty opinion, raised against the knowledge of God, and take every captive, take thought, take every thought captive to obey Christ. That's that's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. And it, we know about, we've, we've, we, many of us know about strongholds and we can talk about strongholds, but strongholds are, they're, they're a construction, aren't they? What is a, what is a fortress 
If you go to a, one of the castle cities in Wales, you've, the fortress is a, is, a, is a stronghold. It's not built in the valley. It's built at the top of a hill. It's the place that's impenetrable. And, and the enemy loves to lock us up in a castle of a stronghold. <clears throat> and I'm not, this, most, this message mostly isn't about strongholds, but it's part of it. It's part of things which are not founded on Christ. No stronghold in your life, in your thinking, is founded on Christ. It cannot be. So if, the, if there's a stronghold, Jesus says, I want, I want to knock that down. And I want you to cooperate with me in knocking that down. Knocking down that stronghold. Knocking down things. And there's, what did, what's described as strongholds, which are, it's basically, it's, it's mostly stuff that's in our mind. <laughs> strongholds. Every argument, every lofty opinion, ideas, stuff which we think is so important. Because that, we, what we think is in our heart is how we behave. So if, if, I've got a, if I've got a wrong view of something, that can become a stronghold. And I, I don't know what those things are going to be in your life, but God is an expert at clearing the ground. And he's, and he's got to start up there, knocking that stronghold down. And we've got to, we've got to be willing to do that work. I think there's, there's, there's a bit of work here. And what does it say? It says... We take thought, we take, so I couldn't get this out before, we take every thought captive. Every thought. It's a pretty high standard. Now, I, I can't say I'm there, but I, God is not doing a general work. He wants us, he, every thought, every inclination which is not built on Christ, one by one, he wants to take it captive. He wants to, we want to bring it to nothing. And as, as we do this, as we allow God to do this process, something which we need to allow God to do, yeah, on a Sunday morning, there's a you know, time for response or whatever it is, but actually it's a day-by-day -day walk. This is a process of, of me walking with, and you, walking with God and him Putting, just putting his spotlight on those things and saying, foundation issue there, just need to clear that one out. And actually, those some things which go back years that, you, that we've never bothered sorting out, God can just deal with, and he wants to. It's his glory. Because actually, if you carry on to the end, building on something other than, than Christ, a large part of the stuff will be burned up on the Day of Judgment. I don't know what that's going to look like, the Day of Judgment, but we've got a picture of, of, of us building a house using all sorts of materials. Let's just use that picture and say, OK, I don't want that wall there, that stud wall that I've got there, which is made of hay, wood, and straw, which is going to be burned up. Let's get rid of that. Lord, help show me how to get rid of this stuff out of my... Because I want the, I want the whole of my life to be on that foundation. Everything that I do, everything that I think, everything that I, that I say, all of the plans that, that I have, bring them all to nothing, actually, and I want your plans. I want my, I want my, my, my desires for my family, my desires for, my, for what the rest of my life is going to look like, however, however long you've got to be just built on that foundation. And Jesus is committed to doing that. What a wonderful, it's, it's a good message. I don't think this is a negative message at all. It's not. There is a warning, it's strong. But actually, Christ is a living foundation. He's a living foundation. And he will do these things. Uh, it can be painful. It can be painful to go through. Before I, got, before I got to know Anna, I went through a painful time of dealing with some of this stuff, and I, it was spade work. I, hid, I effectively hid away for a year and did spade work just on some things that were, that were, they were buried. 
And they can, these things can be buried. They can be hidden. They can be stuff which I know it's there. I know there's a problem. I just don't know what, how, what the answer is. But the Lord will show you. He's very good at showing us how to get this stuff out of the way. So just in conclusion, we've, we've got a wonderful saviour, haven't we? We've got a wonderful foundation that he wants to, he wants to lay. He, he doesn't just give us, here's a stone, there you go. He gives us himself. He wants to lay that foundation. You, if you haven't got the foundation, if you don't know that you've got the foundation, ask him, open your heart, and he will, he will set your feet upon a rock. There is a stabilising which comes. It's not just all about what do next. It is, there is a stabilising as we, as we, as he sets our feet upon a rock. Let's, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your, your word to us this morning, Lord, your great love. You're such a, you're, you're, you're so good, Lord, the tone of voice that you use with us is love. Lord, even when you speak difficult things, Lord, it's love. Lord, you, you lead us through difficulties. You lead us through things in our lives that we need to deal with in love, Lord. You don't expose us and go, hey, it should be like that. You say, come to me. Come to me. And we can deal with this. We can deal with this. We can deal with strongholds. We've got mighty weapons to deal with them, if you're willing. And for those who don't have, a, have Christ as your, as your foundation, let's just, just pray. Just open your heart. Father, reveal yourself as, the, as who you are. The one who is the foundation. The one who, through his son, Jesus Christ, has made a solid foundation for every man, woman and child. Everybody on this earth can be founded on Christ. You will do it. We can't do it ourselves, Lord, but you come by your spirit and we pray that you will do that, Lord. To set our feet upon a rock, Lord, and thank you for reminding us, Lord, that we, have, we are in a solid place, Lord. Praise be to your name, Lord. Amen.